Hey, Deserve listeners, The Other Way, 90 Day Fiance. My name is Dr. Kirk Honda. I'm a therapist and a professor. Keep in mind that everything I say is completely speculative based on very little information. Let's watch. And she did the same thing for me. She also has eight tattoos total. Two or three of them have my name on it. So yeah, that's a big deal. Okay, so I'm always looking for indications of shenanigans and if she has a tattoo of him, then it lends itself to the credibility of their relationship, you know, because sometimes there are questions as to whether or not the relationship is real. So the fact that she has three tattoos with his name indicates that they genuinely are in a relationship together. When I get there, it's, I just hope that we won't be fighting like we do and everything is going to be a lot better. We fight a lot because we're so far away. Yeah, but we fight like almost every day. That is surprising, but we've only seen a little bit of them. According to the two of them, they fight a lot every day. And what do they have to fight about? <laughs> so they fight every day. Is that why he's on the phone with her all the time? Because he's worried about, I don't know. So, hmm. Well, when I, you know, said, put the poll, when I put the poll on YouTube asking which couple I should watch, and there's two seasons of 90 Day Fiance happening at the same time. Has that ever happened before? I feel like in my time watching the show, that's never happened. But the unanimous, or near unanimous, uh, uh, you know, vote was for this couple, which, you know, usually that doesn't indicate they're a Kenny and Armando. Usually it indicates they're like a Colt and Larissa. So the fact that they're fighting all the time shouldn't surprise you based on that. But I wonder what they fight about. I can't just go out and talk to any girl working or receptionist or cash register without me and you fighting. Don't make me feel bad right now because it's your fault. Okay, so this is like a... Gino and Jasmine thing where she makes him take the phone around with him all the time. I mean, we saw him in the store, which, yeah, that would be laborious. It's one thing if you're at home l l relaxing, having dinner over video chat or watching a movie together over video chat or uh, that sort of thing. But to walk through a grocery store holding the camera, I mean, that would really be laborious and, and annoying. <laughs> so... It sounds like she's saying maybe he cheated on her with someone that he met or some other person. And so she's like, as a consequence, you need to, uh, you know, bring me with you everywhere. And okay, so she's saying it's his fault. I'm not friendly to other girls. I understand you. I overthink too. I get jealous, but I'm scared that this fighting. Okay, so she says you, you're too friendly with other women in society, like ca cashiers, like with, with Gino and Jasmine. And then, uh, what did you say? Don't make me feel bad right now because it's your fault. I'm too not friendly to other girls. It's hard to imagine him being a flirt, but who knows? So, hmm. I mean, it's starting to look like she's overly jealous and controlling. I understand you. I overthink too. I get jealous, but I'm scared that this... Oh, that was the other thing he says. He says, I get jealous too. I overthink. Okay. I think what that means is either he sees it this way or they both see it this way that when they overthink, meaning they become paranoid about cheating, then problems happen. Fighting and getting insecure and jealous, it's just going to keep coming up. We don't know what will happen in the, in the future. Every relationship has fights, so we can't avoid fights. Yeah, there's wisdom to that, but if you're fighting every day about things that could be worked on, then that shouldn't be overlooked. To say that, well, you know, all couples fight is uh, maybe an excuse or justification to not try to work on it or to think that it's normal. And certainly every relationship past a certain length of time, sometimes just a week, but sometimes, you know, you start fighting six months in or something. Uh, fighting is is normal, depending on what we mean by fighting, right? But from the sound, I mean, every day, I can't imagine seeing a couple in my office and hearing them say that they fight every day and having that be 
a workable situation. Now, she did say earlier, we fight a lot because we're apart. And maybe what she's saying is, if I'm with you, then I won't worry as much. And so we won't fight as much. Maybe that's what she's saying. Hey, deserving listeners. Today's episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. Sometimes in life, we are faced with tough choices and the path forward isn't always clear. And some of you might even be facing a tough choice right now. Well, for me, I like to fully explore all the options. That usually helps me to feel more confident moving forward. And sometimes it really helps to talk with someone and get their perspective and maybe their wisdom. And of course, therapy can help with this. I never planned on specializing in this area when I started out as a therapist, but over time, a lot of clients have come to me when they are facing tough choices that they're having a hard time figuring out what to do. Well, one option worth exploring is BetterHelp. If you're thinking of starting therapy, it's worth giving a try. It's entirely online. It's designed to be convenient and suited to your schedule. And also you can switch therapists at any time at no additional charge. So let therapy be your map with BetterHelp. BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Kirk today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Kirk. I love her so much, but sometimes the obsessiveness is a double-edged sword. Yeah, that's a good way of putting it. The obsessiveness on one hand is really nice because it means that she really loves him and is putting a lot of effort into to the relationship, cares a lot about the relationship. But on the other hand, it's really a problem because of the overthinking, as he puts it, and being paranoid and controlling. So, yeah. And given his potential abandonment schemas and issues, often people with that schema can be attracted to someone who is obsessive and paranoid and controlling because if they date someone that is more securely attached, there will be a ramp up to closeness, right? And even when they are close, they're not completely enmeshed. You know, the partner isn't just like obsessively trying to hold on to you, like preoccupation, which it kind of looks like what she is exhibiting. And so if you have those abandonment issues and those worries, and someone is just normally close and distant over time, differentiated, that's the definition of differentiated, is to be able to be close when it makes sense and to be separate when it makes sense and to be able to move flexibly back and forth based on what's happening and what people need at the time. And that uh, process could uh, create a lot of anxiety for someone with abandonment issues because when there is a little bit of distance, it's like, oh no, what's happening? or feeling like you're inadequate or something. And so people with, I think, the, the issues that he might be facing might actually attract or be attracted to a lot of people who are very preoccupied. And it doesn't lend itself to a healthy relationship, right? Because uh, the person is attracted to you out of fear, not out of wanting to be with you. So they're showing the area where Brandon lives in Oregon, which is pretty close to Washington. And uh, I just want to point out that if you're interested, that where I grew up outside of Seattle, it looks a lot like this, a lot of lakes, a lot of trees, a lot of the same kind of foliage, um, a lot of people on boats fishing and you know other kinds of things. So kind of nice to see someone, a local. But if you're asking me to watch this couple, usually that means it's these people are not great people. So it kind of bums me out. Like I remember, wasn't Corey from Washington State? And then I start thinking, oh, like I want people to represent. Um, who else was from Seattle? You had Mike and Natalie. Mike was outside Seattle, pretty far outside Seattle in Squim. You had Ash and Avery. Avery, I think, was north of Seattle in Linwood or Everett or something. Yeah, yeah. I have a lot of pride in my town, so it's always uh, I'm like, oh, hopefully they're nice people. So hopefully, hopefully they just fight about circumstance and they're both good people. I don't know. They seem like good people so far. I'm moving to the Philippines in two weeks. But in the meantime, while I wait, I have Mary with me wherever I go. I'm heading down to the dentist's office right now, getting my teeth cleaned. Mary wants to know what I'm doing. She's very clingy, and I really like that because I'm kind of the same way. 
Okay, so he's saying that she's clingy, one of the most frequent adjectives that will be applied to preoccupied, attached individuals is clingy. And then he says, that's okay though, because I'm clingy too. So does that mean he, due to his issues, he's also preoccupied and uh, obsessive and, you know, preoccupied, meaning that you're preoccupied with the attachment and you're preoccupied with indications you're gonna lose the attachment. So, yeah, I mean, if they're both on board with the 24-7 video chat, then, you know, it, it, it will alienate, <laughs> you know, if I had a friend like this and the uh, person, you know, the video chat was sitting right there, uh, it would be hard to hang out with a friend, but, you know, hopefully, it, maybe it's just the beginning of a relationship thing that they're doing. Hi, my name is Brandon. I scheduled a teeth cleaning for 11 a.m. We have very similar past histories. Our ex has cheated on us and contributes to our insecurities and jealousy issues. And so being on the phone 24-7 helps give that reassurance that we're not doing anything that we shouldn't be. Hi, I'm always happy to hear background. So they both have had past relationships where they were cheated on. And so this helps to re reassure both of them. So it's not just her being paranoid, but he also needs this and wants this. So, you know, it's a win-win, it sounds like. Now, I should mention that a lot of people will call this codependent, but that's not codependency. They will think of it as co, meaning like two people, you know, like co-hosts of a podcast. You're talking about two hosts or multiple hosts. <clears throat> and so they think codependency means that multiple dependencies on each other, but codependency is over-functioning, which I've been over. So the correct psychological term would be overly dependent or preoccupied attachment, that kind of thing. So it, it looks like they might have that sort of relationship. It doesn't mean that it's dysfunctional. The fact that they're fighting all the time, I suspect means that they are using control, maybe her mainly, but maybe him too, to try to deal with an underlying fear of losing the person instead of actually addressing the fear straight on, right? Um, I'm guessing the two of them have a lot of trauma to heal from, uh, not only from the past cheating, but also for him and his issues growing up. I'm just assuming that there are issues there, which I don't know. <clears throat> and so once you work on that, become more securely attached, you have earned security, and you become more differentiated, you figure out your emotions, you can look at them with more objectivity. Um, you might go along with your emotions sometimes, but you might not. So uh, to fight a lot of, and you know, to have a lot of fighting and then to use control as a way of trying to reduce conflict doesn't usually work in the end. But, you know, maybe they're also in parallel. You know, I'll, I'll work with couples like this for seven years. And for the first four years, you will see a lot of the dysfunction sustaining itself because it's a defense against much worse things. And so they, they need the dysfunctional defenses just to get through the day as an individual or as a couple. And then over time, as they heal, then they can start actually shedding those, those defenses naturally. I mean, sometimes I have to suggest it, but sometimes they just go away naturally. You know, If the two of them really felt secure in themselves and in their relationship, they probably wouldn't want to be on video chat all the time. You know, each of them would say, hey, you know what, today, let's maybe not do that. You wouldn't have to tell them to do that. Uh, but sometimes you have to suggest it as a clinician. All right, well, that does it for that episode, everyone. Please take care of yourself because you deserve it. You really, really do.